All right, so uh, let's see here. Uh, dissolving ionic compounds such as salt uh, involves complex interactions. Okay, we get this. All right, now if you, um, yeah, it's just talking about lattice energy. So let's just get to the picture there, diagram. I think it makes a little bit more sense. So you can look up the heat of solution for salt back of the book, online, whatever. So if you go right from NaCl, so that's the crystal in the bottom left, and then straight across the bottom there, you go to the hydrated Na plus Cl minus, that requires four kilojoules per mole. Is that endothermic or axon? Endo, how do you know? Positive, just making sure we're, we're keeping it simple, right? A lot of this stuff we've already kind of, we already know. Now, if you do the two steps, which is technically how it works, is you need 788 kilojoules per mole. We just figured that out. We had 787, and the symbol for that is U. You know, I haven't seen that really, so I wouldn't too much worry too much about the symbol. But so the energy required to break that into its gas, that's 788 kilojoules per mole. And now the heat of hydration, what is that? It's the energy um, that is released or formed when it forms its new attraction inside the water. So when you break apart the salt into Na plus Cl minus, that's obviously a positive endothermic. It doesn't want to do that. But when it forms those attractions in water on the right side of the pic uh, picture there, that's an endothermic process, and that's negative, or sorry, exothermic, sorry, exo, negative 7084. So that is favorable, right? Anytime you form attractive forces, that's usually a good thing. They want to do it, that's stable. So where'd that four come from? Where's the positive they four? the 788 and, oh, they added the 788 and 74. Right, so if you look back, or look in your notes, or back to 260, the heat of solution equals the heat of, um, the, sorry, the enthalpy of solution equals the heat of the solution minus the heat of the components. That's essentially what's going on there, okay? If you look at the bottom of that figure 6.11, it says delta H solution equals U plus delta H hydration. So. The amount of energy it takes to break the salt apart, but then the amount of energy it loses when it forms those attractions in water, that's the overall energy of that process. So even though it is, it happens, right? We put salt in water, it will dissolve, so that's thermodynamically favorable. It's actually an endothermic process. That's why I said Friday, usually. Usually exothermic are thermodynamically favorable, endothermic are not. But in this case, it is. So why would that be? This, was, this could be a great AP question. They might have you solve for the heat of solution, right? So they give you the lattice energy. They give you the hydration. You add them together, you get the four. And then, you know, then it says, all right, uh, based on that answer, explain uh, is this thermodynamically favorable or not? And you would probably lean towards it's not because it's endothermic. But what's the driving force? Why would I tell you this is thermodynamically favorable? Remember that weird little phrase in reason. Systems in nature tend to progress towards low energy, which means exothermic. And, right. So what's, what's winning here? It's not the energy part, it's the entropy. So solutions have more entropy than compounds. So when you mix salt and water, the entropy is driving this. Now you might say entropy is just like how disordered it is. Yeah, well guess what? There's actual numbers attached to entropy you're gonna learn this week. So we can calculate the entropy of something. So you're gonna see there's this thing called Gibbs free energy. I'm hoping I kind of teach things in step by the end of the week it all makes sense and you're like, oh, this makes way more sense than just learning that weird phrase in Regents Chem. Um, so that's just, just an example of how do we figure out the heat of solution for salt, right? So um, let's write that down in our notes. So to get this, we would take the lattice energy of NaCl solid, which is positive 78, 788 kilojoules per mole. And then we would take the uh, delta H of hydration, or I'm just copying what's from the book there, of the Na plus um, and the Cl minus. So when they, when they dissolve in water and form those attractions, that's negative um, 7, what is it? 84, right. 
negative 784 kilojoules per mole. So what we do, we add these, to, so the heat of solution, you have to put this much energy in to get the ions. Think of it that way. How do we get the ions? You gotta rip it apart. It takes this much. Well then when those ions form attractions with the water, it releases this much. So overall, it's positive four kilojoules per mole. And again, these numbers have to be provided to you. I'm just trying to get you to understand the concept that it should make sense, I hope now, that we're going over it, it needs, uh, need, both of these together are the overall reaction. Kind of like we just did those steps to solve for this on that video. There's always steps involved. So you can look this up or it's given to you, you can look this up or it's given to you, but both of them have to uh, be accounted for for the overall heat of solution. All right, flip it. Okay, uh, in other words, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read this. I like the way the book shows this here. Um, we would need to supply 788 kilojoules to break one mole of solid salt into Na plus Cl minus. Now that we have the Na plus Cl minus, now it says gaseous. Obviously it's not in the gas states, it's in water, uh, but it's the same amount of energy to rip that apart. So now, once it's attracted to the, to the water and, and dissolves, that's aqueous, that's uh, called the hydration process, that is negative, uh, where the heck is it, negative 70, 784 kilojoules per mole, and they're just basically laying it out like I did. I just kind of summarized it a little bit different, but they are showing you actually a better way. I should probably have written it that way because they're showing you exactly what I was trying to teach you in the video. The Na plus Cl minus on both sides cancel out. So you have NaCl solid left over, Na plus Cl minus left over, and that takes four kilojoules per mole. For you two who are at home here, watching this hopefully, that would be Trevor and Ben. Let me uh, show you what's going on here. So they said this, NaCl solid, and this is why it's really important to keep these um, accurate. Because this is a gas, and this is a gas, so you really gotta make sure you keep that straight. And then they had this one, Na plus gas, plus Cl minus gas, and I think they did it this way. Na plus Aq, plus Cl minus Aq. Let me double check, yep. So this delta H here is positive 78, 788 kilojoules per mole. Uh, this delta H is negative 784 kilojoules per mole. You add them together. Uh, you know what, we should all write this down actually. Write this down. So this is, this is actually kind of like what we're gonna learn called Hess's Law, so we're gonna learn this. The gases cancel out, just like the video. You're given information in steps to get the overall process. So if you haven't noticed, I'm really trying to stress that today, is a lot of these thermodynamic questions are, are like this. And the concept, I want you to understand the concept. In order to dissolve salt, first you have to rip it apart. Well, what's the energy associated with that? Well, then you have to uh, form those attractive forces. Well, what's the energy with that? And then you just add them together. So you get NaCl solid dissociating, and you get Na plus Aq and Cl minus Aq. And the overall delta H of the solution is four kilojoules That's why I like to use the book here, because I'll be honest, my notes on this aren't very good. I mean, I, I got it all in my head, but I don't have an organized note book for this, not this part of this unit. So I like using the book. It, it shows you exactly what you need to do. So now, for fun, do the review of concepts. There is no slowing down. Use the data in Appendix 3 to calculate the heat of solution for the following process. So all you're gonna do is mimic this for KNO3. I just want you to practice once on your own here. See if you can do it. So go ahead. In your notes, show the same exact process for KNO3. But I am gonna actually stop for a second. We'll take a breath for a second. There's no time. There's no time for that. Uh, does anybody have a legitimate question here? Taylor? Yeah. Anybody? 
speech. So how do you know when to do like, what we did in the video was like super long and this one's super short, how do you know? So the, the saving grace is the AP test would only give you what you need. They're not gonna give you like 30 different reactions and say solve for delta H for this process. They're pretty much only gonna, they might give you four or five steps with delta H, you're just gonna have to figure out how to manipulate it to get the overall. We're gonna, we're, you're gonna see, we're gonna practice more of this. Okay. All right, so that's a good question, but I would only give you these two. So now in this problem, it's a little more open-ended. It says the practice, use appendix three. You go to appendix three, I bet there's other delta H's, but all you need is lattice energy and heat of hydration. Again, this stuff you would not have to memorize. It will be given to you. Where is appendix? It's before the glossary. Oh, there. Before the glossary. Uh, I'll give you a page, but it's okay. A8. I found it. Thermodynamic data at 1 ATM and 25 Celsius. There's like five appendix for you. Yeah. Go to the start of it. This is actually a good time to talk about appendix three. Everybody go to appendix three, please. We're going to be using this a lot this week. All right, everyone go to Appendix 3, and I just want to explain a little bit about what you're looking at. Volcanoes? Not volcanoes. Zero. Here, I'll just make sure we're all on the, all on the same page here. Appendix 3. Appendix 3. Alright, now if we look at the top of Appendix 3. What symbol do you see that might be new to you? Um, all of them. All of them, good. Uh, sort of. Uh, top left is uh, delta H sub F, right? You see the little, uh, the little notch up top? Degrees. Yeah, it's not degrees. Not. Um, Can you say that again? Notch. 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 For delta H F sub F. Yeah. That's the heat of formation. Who has zeros? Any of the solids. CL2. CL2. What else? CA. CA. Yeah. Go ahead. Give me one, Taylor. CS. What do you guys notice these all have in common? They're elements. Heat of formation. Look at me, so I know you're listening, right? Listen with your eyes. So. So, the heat of formation is the energy required to form a substance. So why do you think there's no energy required to form an element? They're already naturally formed. They already exist. You don't have to form them. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Okay. What's the, the, so that's heat of formation. So if you want to make something, like look, everyone go to the, go to page, I guess A9. Go to A9. Everyone go to A9. Nope. You go to A9. <laughs> if you look at the top one, CO2, uh, CO3 minus 2, that's a carbonate ion, right? If you want to form that, it loses 676.3 kilojoules per mole. Okay? Now, most of those, if not all of the heat of formation, not all, but most are what symbol? Negative, that makes sense. Forming things is a good thing, right? They, they share electrons or transfer and they have full balance shells, they're stable. But if you look at CS2, gas, that's positive, 115.3. So to make CS2, it's gonna take energy. So again, what is heat of formation? How much energy it loses or gains when you make that substance? We're gonna talk about that this week. Next, delta G, that's called Gibbs free energy. That's a big deal. Okay, that's a big deal. We'll talk about this. There's an equation that we need to know. It's on your equation sheet, but that's that's something. I'm not going to go in detail right now, but um, delta G is a big deal. Now, next to it is S. Guess what S stands for? Solution. Entropy, actually. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, S is uh, entropy. They don't use well, E because E means energy. So S is entropy. Now, the good thing about this appendix is as long as you know the temperature, you can use delta H, which they give you, kind of, and S. 
to solve for delta G. So appendix three is gonna be your friend here this week and part, part of next week, all right? So I just thought it was good to explain a little bit about what you're looking at. Now, what are we doing? Back to the class here? Yeah. Yeah. Review concept. Right, so we need to find the lattice energy for KNO3. What are you? <laughs> yes, I cut my finger off plastic. Which is really <laughs> um, so we need to find the lattice energy of KNO3, and we need to find the heat of hydration of K plus and NO3 minus. So that is not the heat of formation. Well, I don't know. You know what? You know what would be a great way to prove or disprove that theory? Find NACL on that and see if it matches our number. No. Feel free to talk to each other, but I want you to try and figure it out. No. All right, so I guess that's not it, huh? So then none of these numbers on this table are going to we created this book. What we don't know. Yeah. They just throw question marks. Yeah, just, I like two O's. Carry on. What's that? I don't know. I don't want to carry on. I think it's time to go. No, not yet. Not yet. So crazy. I'm trying to give you the answer. The answer. I don't. I thought the book had it somewhere. Why is there a question mark for some of them? Um, I gotta look at it. Hold on. All right. Here, write this down. Oh, I really want you to try and do this for homework. The answer, so this is the end result here, according to the uh, interweb here, 34.8 kilojoules per mole. 34.8, sorry, 34.89. 34.89 kilojoules per mole. I thought the book had it, but I guess not. So I want you to try and think about... Um, what you need to do to figure out the heat of that answer, right? So take what you learned in class, think about, all right, how are we gonna separate the salt, right? How are we gonna get this number? And then how are we gonna get this number? All right, so it's telling you you can do it with appendix three. I get, I'm making this a little bit challenging here, but see what you can do, all right? Um, we are almost out of time. I was hoping to get one more thing done today. Um, I guess that's it. I guess we'll stop. The bell's going to ring soon here. Hey, McCoy. Yeah. You know what my new motto is? What's that? Do as you order and ask into the water. <laughs> Do as you what? Order? Do as you order and ask into water. It's in the book. It's in the book? Yes. It's in the book. That's really funny. Oh, no. It's so stupid. It's all an answer. It's all an answer. Oh, I can probably stop this now. <laughs>